Hey everybody, um, just want to put a little uh, video together here today and talk about rudiments. Uh, a little bit of brief history and uh, just how, uh, how everything came about and to how, how the language and what they are. Um, and also the most, most important thing is why are they important that you learn them. Uh, and so the first part of this is, is going to be kind of a personal history, but some of it's, you know, it kind of ties in. So um, the, my first introduction to really my rudiments was I was in seventh grade. And I've been playing then for about four or five years, and I could read notation. I've been playing in church, and uh, um, I could read standard notation, like 16th notes, eighth notes, quarter notes, I, you know, and, and get through some things. And I, and I had a drum set at home, and I, I could play, you know, some basic rock beats and everything, but, um, but I didn't really have a vocabulary of, of, uh, of things to work with. But uh, I, my, in my first lesson with my teacher, I... Um, he handed me this, this sheet that had like these words next to it and like five strokes and these, these things that I really never seen before and, and had all of these like tempos next to them. And it's like, all right, we got to get a, this tempo and this tempo and this tempo. And then we move on to this tempo and this tempo. And I was like, okay, so what, what was all this for and why, why am I doing this? Um, and he introduced to me uh, um, a, a, uh, an association called NARD, well, and we were playing out of this book called the National Association of Rudimental Drummers, uh, and they had like this solo book, and we were reading solos out of it, and so as I was learning all of these rudiments, I was playing them out of these this solo book, and um, it was really cool because like some of this stuff I'd seen before in the music uh, um, that I'd been playing recently, but I, honestly, I just kind of faked my way through it, and, um, but what this did was like, I was able to start to understand the vocabulary of drumming and apply it not only to like the snare drum, but also to the other parts of, of percussion, like being on my keyboard stuff or being on my drum set. And so it really opened up a whole nother world of playing for me, which was beyond what was given to me in the music that was, I was playing in my band class. And so. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about why the, uh, uh, what, what are the rudiments and why are they important. So before we get to that, we're going to talk a little bit about what I just said with uh, the, the National Association of Rudimental Drumming, which is NARD. Um, that is these guys. And so um, the National Association of Rudimental Drumming, this is like a brief history here. Um, and I'm going to go uh, a little off base because they have a website that you can look at. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Um, pull it up. Um, but they, this is this is some great stuff. And if you um, if you ever get a chance to check out their website, uh, it is nard n a r d dot u s dot com. Uh, just to just to look at a few of the things, but. To understand what it, what's the importance of NARD, and that is that it brought together the language of, uh, of drumming for us and set aside thir the first 13 essential uh, rudiments. And so I'm going to read a little bit of this for you just so that you can, you can kind of get a grasp of it, and this will be brief. But um, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with NARD, here is a brief history. The, or, uh, the association was organized during the American Legion National Convention in 1933 uh, by a group of prominent drummers pictured on the page, and I'll give you guys a picture here in a second. It says, who selected 13 of the standard rudiments required for membership into this organization. And it should be assumed that the purpose of this group was to, uh, was to uh, originate, was not to originate or invent any of these rudiments, but it was to review the earlier rudiments that came from Switzerland 200 years previously. And at the time when music to notation was not standardized. Now, so really what this is, is like these guys came together to uh, um, uh, really to, to, to just forward or make something standardized because there really wasn't a standardization of oh here's this and here's that and you know and, uh, um, there's all these different ways to come to it but this really set in place a, a concrete block of if you're going to be a drummer you should learn these things first you should learn these languages or know this language first so that first of all we can communicate and also music 
musicians and composers can uh, uh, can write for our medium in ways that are uh, um, good for us, in ways that we know how to communicate back and forth with each other. And so um, the, uh, the original rudiments found their way from Switzerland to fr uh, from Switzerland, we're Swiss, go figure, right? Uh, to France and then to England. And it was during the American Revolution that they were first introduced into the US. Shortly thereafter, a number of publications using these rudiments appeared. Uh, one of the very first was by Charles Stuart Ashworth in 1812. Um, and so from there, uh, you know, so we have the Switzerland to France, then to England. England comes over, uh, uh, colonizes America, and then we have the American Revolutionary War. And so in this, up until this point in time, uh, a lot of the, the learning of the rudiments itself was all done by rote and by uh, um, uh, just oral tradition, people passing it down, teaching, you know, uh, people just instructional by hand there was really not a whole lot of written written notation for it or how to write for it and what or are these things are but the language itself was all taught person to person and so this was to help standardize notation uh for drummers all around the world so that we can get better and that we can learn the keys to success of playing and so uh another key figure in that whole uh the whole gamut was also uh john philip sousa i'm sure some of you have heard of john philip sousa uh stars and stripes forever and all the countless other marches uh that he's written but he was a key component also of helping standardize that notation that we read so that composers can write with a um, specific sound in mind and also uh uh, uh just so that they can communicate to drummers uh, what they want to have it played and how it is played on the instrument. Um, but the, uh, getting back to the NARD, the, the whole NARD thing, it says the main objective of the 13 organizers was to standardize a system of drumming by selecting a group of rudiments on which the core and drummers would be judged. They would, uh, thus, they selected what we now refer to as the essential 13 rudiments. The 13 rudiments that we were selected from the 26 standard American rudiments as a test for membership into this association. It was assumed that the student who studies the first 13 essential rudiments, realizing their value, would of his own accord continue his or her own accord, continue to study the remaining rudiments that they may be termed as auxiliary rudiments. However, the first 13 are considered absolutely necessary or essential both in, in contest and professional playing. And so uh, this is just like going, if you want to be a professional drummer, you got to know these things. If you want to call yourself a drummer, you need to know these things. And the funny thing about that too, and I loved about the whole idea of NARD was that you had to study with someone who was a professional, who was a seasoned veteran, who had their own card. And actually they used to have these cards that a, a national associated rhythm card, like you were a certified rudimental drummer, which was way, I, lo I love that idea. Um, uh, but it, it just showed that you had found somebody who was a certified teacher or a certified player, someone who had learned, and that you had spent time working with that person and or teacher to, uh, uh, to gain your certification. And you yourself had earned that by right with somebody who was seasoned in that uh, uh, in the 13. And so, um, but that's, um, that's kind of like the, 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 the nuts and bolts of it. Um, so, uh, that's the brief history. Let's move on. So there are, uh, here are the, the uh, founding uh, fathers of NARD, if you might want to, if you want to go there. Uh, whoop, let's go back a little bit. Oops. There we go. Uh, and let me see if I can get back to my website here. And those guys are, uh, the front row left was Harry Thompson, uh, Geo Robinson, uh, W.M. Flowers, W.D. or Bill Kiefer, W.F. Hammond, Joe Hathaway, Lawrence Stone, which those of you who know uh, the Stone book, um, Roy Knapp, and the back row left to right is uh, uh, William Ludwig, which of course, you know, if you've ever watched uh, uh, The Tonight Show, uh, Questlove plays on the Ludwig kit, you know, that's Ludwig, okay? so. Uh, so that's the back row, Ludwig, uh, M. Gerlach, 
Jay Burns Moore, William C. Miller, and Ed B. Strait. So who are these guys? So think about this. These are the 13 to get uh, together. Harry Thompson was a prominent, prominent Chicago drummer and instructor. Uh, Prominent theater drummer was George Robertson. Bill Flowers was expert in rudimental instruction, winner of the national and state rudimental contest. Bill Kiefer, drummer with the U.S. Marine Band and judge in the both National Legion individual drumming and drum corps contests. Uh, Bill Hammond was a uh, snare drummer of the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. Joe Hathaway was a core instructor and winner of the American Legion 1932 championships. Uh, Larry Stone, instructor and teacher, composer of many instruction books and snare drummer for the Boston Opera Company and Boston Symphony Orchestra. Uh, Ludwig was former snare drummer of Chicago Grand Opera, Chicago Opera, and just renowned drum manufacturer and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there was uh, Heine Gerlach, four-time national champion of the American Legion Contest, Jay Burns Moore, tempest of the New Haven, Connecticut Symphony, and prominent drum instructor throughout the New England states. Bill, uh, Billy Miller, prominent theater drummer of Chicago, drum teacher and composer of the drum corps, and Ed Strait was Chicago's most popular theater drummer and composer of many instruction books. So these, these big figures all got together to make this happen. And, and, that's, it, and this is kind of where the, the birthplace of your standardized, what you read in the rudiments and the language that we speak now. And so um, that's, um, that's a little bit of that, and let's move on. Uh, here are the 13 essential rudiments that they agreed upon. There is the long roll, the double stroke roll, the five stroke roll, seven stroke roll, flams, flam accents, flam cue, roughs, single drags, double drags, double paradiddle, single ratum cue, and the triple ratum cue. Now, it's important that you stop before we do this and go into the, and we go in more in depth in the rudiments. And the reason why I say that is you must have a, like a very strong sense of, of the music reading fundamentals uh, when you move into this. And if you don't, I would really go back and, and really get a solid grasp on that before we kind of move forward. And, and if you have an okay one, it's, it's good to move forward, but go back and really think about like, as you read through some of these two, because you're gonna find the rudiments in all different forms, shapes and forms of musical notation the more that you know them and the more that you come across, the more familiar you are with your basic uh, music notation, your you know, whole notes, half notes, 16th notes, 32nd notes, 64th notes, all that stuff, the better you are with that. You're gonna be able to quickly, quickly grasp on to the rudiment concepts and how, and how that language works. So um, just, to, just a thought as we move forward. So um, the purpose of rudiments themselves is uh, they're the combination of the most common hand patterns found in music, especially specifically music that we, we do using our hands. And uh, rudiments are literally the language of drumming that, that we have. Um, so like when I talk to other drummers and if we could, I, I could just, if somebody else knows the rudiments, I go, hey, let's play two paradiddle diddles and a tap roll. And they already know what I'm talking about. And so if you don't know your rudiments, you have no idea what that is. And not only that, when you pull up a new piece of music, it will make it much easier for you to look at it. Let me make an example. Um, when we learn the English language, what's the first thing that we learn, which is, well, the ABCs. And so the ABCs are what we would equivalent to the basic foundation of notation, like 16th notes, eighth notes, whole notes, the things that construct music. Our rudiments are words. Now we put these rudiments back to back together in different forms and different shapes to make musical statements. And so if you don't know your rudiments, you literally only know the ABCs of drumming. If you do know your rudiments, then you can speak. And some of us speak fluently. Some of us speak with a little bit of a slur. Some of us speak with a little bit, but the point is this, is that once you understand those rudiments, you get the whole idea of speaking the language of music. And when you pick up a new piece of music, you can look at it and go, five stroke roll, five stroke roll, paradiddle, paradiddle, nine stroke roll, uh, third, you know, and so on, so that you can see these things when you read new music and when you start to write your own music for that matter. So um, 
but uh, the, so the rudiments themselves are essentially the combinations of, of these, this musical notation in the most common forms of hand patterns that we come across as drummers. So that's why it's important you know. Next, so how does knowing them help me play better? I'm gonna give you an example here uh, by uh, Edward Freytag uh, has a killer book uh, and it's, it's published by um, Roloff Publications and it's called The Rudimental Cookbook. And it's pretty much a standard, but it works from like very easy solos to like the super uber complicated solos. And so, um, uh, but I'm gonna give you an example of what knowing your rudiments are. And so here, if you just look at this, at the solo real quick, can you identify what rudiments are being used? Okay, so let's go through here. I'm gonna give just an, a, a small example. So when I look at this, I see five stroke rolls, the first two here in the middle. There's a rhythmic accent here pattern with musical notation, nine stroke roll. Do you know what that sounds like? I mean, I know that you see the shorthand version of this. And by the way, we'll talk about it. I'm going to talk shortly about that one too. This is the shorthand version of both the five stroke roll and the nine stroke roll. But do you know what rhythm is underneath that roll? Okay, two more five stroke rolls. Here's a 17 stroke roll, two paradiddles, single stroke roll here in the middle, flam taps, nine stroke roll here in the middle. Do you know what that's supposed to sound like? What rhythm am I gonna play under that? I, you know, it, all it has is a quarter note with these little slashy things on it, right? Also here is another nine stroke roll. And how did I even know that was a nine stroke leading into it? Now, uh, and then here we have some isolated flams within rhythmic passages. And so the point is this, is that if you don't know your rudiments, this makes no sense to you. No, uh, you, do you know what rhythm to play underneath that nine stroke roll? Right now, he just says it starts with a right or starts a, and ends with a right here. But do you know that you're gonna play four 16th notes, one E and uh, or one T theta with double strokes on them, one T theta two. That's what you'll end up doing. But you wouldn't know that if you didn't know your rudiments. So here, I know that five stroke roll, five stroke roll, one T theta two, T theta, one T theta two, Theta one, theta two, five stroke roll, five stroke roll, one, two, and eat the one, two, theta two, theta one, and so I know exactly how to what that's going to sound like before I ever play. And again, it goes back to language, uh, being able to see and identify these hand patterns, paradiddles, right, left, right, right, and left, right, left, left here in measure nine, and then you have a single stroke roll here in measure ten. Um, so a lot of it is being able to quickly identify, you, you learn your rudiments so that when you read music, you can quickly identify and translate that physical notation into sound. And so knowing these helps you play with number one, more confidence, and number two, with better quality in that confidence. So uh, that's a, a good example for, from this, uh, this solo from Accentuate. And another one that's a kind of a, a standard of medium difficulty here, and when you get more into your more advanced rudiments here, you'll be able to identify these with like the flam accents, five stroke roll, and really another flam accent right here, another one here, and five stroke roll here into a single stroke seven with accents. So you're gonna be able to come across two other things like the single stroke roll, uh, or single stroke seven with different accent patterns, all that kind of business. Here's a seven stroke roll here on the end of the first, uh, the first uh, line at the end of the second measure there. Uh, here's a nine stroke in the middle. These are tap drags, a single drag here, a single drag, uh, single drags here, three of them in a row, another five stroke roll leading into a 13 stroke roll, which ends in a rim shot. 13 stroke roll here, tap fives here. There's one, two, three, four tap five strokes in a row, a single stroke sh seven with a rough on the beginning of it, seven stroke roll leading into a nine stroke roll, even to a paradiddle diddle, that's another hand pattern, a common rudimental hand pattern, two paradiddle diddles into a five stroke roll here, and the lesson 25 here on the end, I love those, uh, and the lesson 25 there on the end. Now the point is this, is that like, I've watched many of students try to learn this solo without knowing their rudiments. And it is like trying to climb a, a mountain that, that is just steeped with brush. Uh, and every week that they come back, they're more and more frustrated. And I just go, hey, you need to learn how to play this rudiment and this rudiment and this rudiment first. Okay, 
So if you're going to play this solo successfully, you need to know what you're looking at and what it's supposed to sound like and have a command over the language that's being used in this solo. And so um, that, that just leads me back to that whole thing. Just go back to your rudiments and learn the standard hand pattern so that when you do read music, that you can sit there and be successful with what's in front of you instead of trying to wade through a right, right, left, left left, right, left, 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 right, right, left, left. Well, you would know what those are, and you would know how that works more, more fluently if you knew the language of the rudiments. And so um, that is, uh, that, that's just a great, another great example here from, uh, from Edward Freytag's book, uh, The Rudiment of Cookbook. But uh, how do I get better with this? And, and how do I get better with my rudiments? Well, first of all, you can download them from just about anywhere. The Percussive Art Society has a whole listing of them. Uh, I have uh, a whole bunch of stuff on my web, uh, my YouTube channel uh, that you do play along that'll break down the, 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 um, the rudiments right hand to left hand, slow to fast to pro level uh, speeds and, and work on them. It, it's, it's something again, that you're learning the language. Uh, you have to think of it like that. And it's something that you, you work on, on a daily basis. Like I'm even now, and I've been playing for now 36 years, I think since I was seven. Um, anyways, uh, the, the point is I still work on my rudiments because uh, um, you're, you're, you're never ever ending. And it's a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun to play too. So um, here's how it works. Work on your rudiments like work on the essential 13, getting those mastered and learn the rest of them too. Now, after the standard rudiments, there's even a whole nother level that we have now that you use in drum core and all these other kind of places, the indoor drum line, all that business uh, that we call hybrid rudiments, which are combinations of standard rudiments placed on top of each other, which are even more fun. And I have a whole uh, video series of play alongs for all, for just about all of them that I can get a hold of. So you can play along with those too. And so, um, but anyways, know your rudiments and not just know them. Like, and I have a, uh, I have a saying that I work with my, that I, that I do with my students. It's like, you know that rudiment, whatever we're working on that week, about as well as I know Michael Jordan. And they always laugh and I'm like, they go, you know Michael Jordan? It's like, no, I like, I know who Michael Jordan is. But like, I don't have his phone number and I can't just call him up. It's like, yo, Mike, what's up? Like, you need to know that rudiment. Like it's somebody that you have a personal relationship with somebody. You need to spend time with that rudiment is what I'm getting at. And so um, learn them from someone who has mastered them, your teacher, a friend, uh, a YouTube video or anything, anything that you can get your hands on, like learn them from someone who has mastered them and someone that you know that can go, hey, you probably wish should do it this way. You should probably lower this here and then drum them with that person, drum them with that video, drum them with that recording, whatever that is, that's how you're going to get better. We, we get better by learning from others and this and what we do as drummers. And so the other thing is this is that once you know the language or once you've mastered a few of those languages, find drum solos that incorporate that language. And of course, the more you read, the better you're going to be. Like playing a snare solo is just like standing up in the middle of your English class and reading, you know, out loud in your English class. In the beginning of it, it's a little nerve wracking. You kind of stumble over yourself. The, 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 the cat, brain, oh, you know, but, and if you remember, and I know some of us have some, some scar tissue from there, from uh, elementary school and, and middle school from that, but I promise you, the more you read on your own in your own private time, the more when you go into public, when you see these things and you're asked to read on the spot, you're going to be able to knock that out without any problem because you practice speaking the language out loud by yourself. So uh, drum your rudiments with friends. That's, that is one of the best ways uh, to, to get better at it too. And it's, and it's a lot of fun too. Uh, so the last one is if you don't have friends, you probably should stop drumming and learn how to make friends, which leads me to my final point. Uh, the drumming community is really friendly place. And you need to, we like to share our knowledge. And uh, uh, if you don't know how to make friends, learn how to do that first and then get to drumming. All right, it's been a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed this session and uh, get on your rudiments. Bye.